Transnational land acquisition, also known as land grabbing, has become a present policy concern in Africa. Land grabbing in Africa by predatory multinational organizations has more than doubled. Foreign nations, companies and individuals are purchasing or leasing vast tracts of land at extreme low prices for mining and agricultural production. This practice, which has violated human rights, lacked indigenous consent and had a negative social and environmental consequences, is now widely regarded by many as a new form of colonization in Africa. In June, the Africa Faith and Justice Network, AFJN, and partners converged with women, youth, and traditional leaders in the southern Sierra Leonean villages, Mongere, Baumal, Pujehon. The gathering aimed to collect and showcase evidence-based information on the harmful effects of FG Gold mining companies and soak fins operation on the rural population. This visit was part of FJN's Just Governance project on a land grabbing, which included two town hall meetings in Mongere and also other town hall meetings in Pujahon. They engaged various stakeholders. So, before now, other companies came, but by then, the government accepted exploration. When this company came, our brothers were still working at the concession where FJ Cold resides. They were still working there. Amara PLC came, our brothers were working there. Alcom came, our brothers were working there. But since FJ Gold came, they told us they have acquired license from the government. Since then, till date, they've abolished all artisanal mining. And that has been the livelihood of people, young men in this area. That situation, we are not happy with it. During that period, when you get to Baumau, the market women and other sectors were flourishing because when a young man comes from the concession, there would be gold and he will be able to sell and pay school fees for their kids. Since FG Gold came, they took over the concession. That has been a problem. Huge number of youths have now migrated to other surrounding villages. That's where they get their living. The same FG Gold, after they took over the concession, they told us they'll pay compensation. In this compensation, they said they will include farmers, people who grow economic trees, and those who did mining. They've paid the farmers, they've paid the people who grew trees. But all the Atasana miners have their slips and now they have not been compensated. And also, the water facility. These are some of the things FG Gold placed in the agreement they gave to us. We told them these are our problems. If you can take over the concession, we know the impact of the mining will help greatly because Baumau is in the middle of the concession. So our problem is proper drinking water. We don't have it. Even the township can testify. I was with the geologist and the engineer sent by FG Gold and from the government to identify areas where they would put the boreholes. Since then, till date, they've done nothing about it. We only have one tap 
functioning in this entire village. The way how the land and concession issues are, before other companies came, there were no fighting. Now we see so much fighting between people. Why do people fight? It's the system that they produce on how villagers would be able to acquire their surface rent by FGC. Our community was not used to this. We need proper sensitization, but no, nothing is happening. The Imam also said, light is very necessary in the community. They used to enjoy 2 for 7, 24 hours light. But since FG Gold came, they told them that they should empower them and give them power supply. But till date, they couldn't have that. And the Imam was stressing on that. They said, if they couldn't be able, give them power supply. Let them leave Bao Mao. Also, a teacher stood up and said, We've been in this town since childhood and we've seen all type of companies come into this land. It has been a very serious problem. They come, cut trees, burn bushes and also whenever minerals depreciate in value, they would go to another place for mining. So when they move, what happens to the community? He appealed. So even if the mining has to move away from Baumau, let them plant tree crops. So when the mining phase out, we will still retain the population as they will have a place wherein they would have their livelihood. So where the youths were, that's the good of the community. They've taken it away from them. <laughs> Those chemicals that they use do not provide adequate protection for the workers. We are seeing our brothers and sisters getting sick. My own brother died from organ failure. Also, they are dumping chemicals in our water streams, destroying our local rice and killing our fish. Most times, they give adverts for jobs, but also when they have given us these adverts, they have already given these people from their own countries, from Freetown, that will take away these jobs. None of us will be able to get this job. It, it feels like a protocol that they observe to just remove or release the advert. So they'll say, because this company has good relationship with the people, they release adverts like this. But if you release adverts, anyone can apply according to the stages they set for employment. Before we get there, before the interview, someone is always there working in the capacity. Our old people who have lost their families cannot be employed by Sokfin. Even when people are hired, their jobs are very temporary. They are hired for a few months and then fired. Because the water has been poisoned, fishing is no longer an option. Women also expressed how displeased they were with FG Gold coming into their chiefdoms. They came, made big and fat promises, but they have done nothing for us. Since they came, they have done nothing for us. They told us they would give us good roads, but they haven't done anything.
one day a friend asked me. He said, on all the minerals FG Gold is getting from this chiefdom, is this the road that they told you that they will make for you guys? Is this the road? This is so disappointing. This is very difficult for us. We are tired. We really want to have what we, what is due us. So this is what I have to say. We have nothing in our hands. We can't fight them. Please, this is all I have to say. Help us. FJ Gold, they came just a few years ago. We did not know anything. They told us they're here for 27 years. 27 years you guys are here? What are you going to do to for us? So they came. They told us so many promises. They told us they will make us good roads. They are here to give us good water. They are here to give us schools. But yet still, nothing we have seen. They have registered us. More than 95% of us has not received anything. We want to revenge. We want to fight. We want to use violence. We really want to fight. But it's for the government. We cannot do anything. We don't want to fight with the government. This is what we have. But honestly, we really want to take this to another level. They have promised us, but they have changed it. But they have done nothing. We are really disgruntled. In a bid to build coalition to address these human and environmental issues, AFJN's executive director met with the Archbishop of Freetown, His Lordship Bishop Tamba Edward Charles, the Minister and Directors of the Ministry of Mines, and other important stakeholders to work as a team to minimize the impact of these investments on the lives of the rural communities.